we all want to be able to hit that driver straight and that little bit further than each and every one of our playing partners. Well, today I have the answer for you. Welcome to Training Tuesday. We're gonna be talking about in today's video how we can control this club face. A key thing to be able to hit this ball straight. If we think as a rough percentage with driver, where this ball ends up is made up of 85% of where this face points. Now, the other 15% is made up of our club path and several other factors, but if we just think here right now, where this face is pointing is absolutely massive. So, we better learn to absolutely control it. So, let's talk through a drill of how we can control this club face in the backswing and how we can control it on the downswing. It's so simple. So getting into this backswing, what I'm looking for you to do here is can we create a move where we feel like the wings of our plane are to the ground. So I know I've got a badminton racket and we've used this in other aspects and in other videos, but what I want you to feel is that this cross section of the where the, where the strings are is actually going to be the wings of a plane. So if I place it on top of my golf club now and grip it in there with golf club or badminton racket, each side of this, this side and this side, the wings of my plane. So what I want you to feel here is during this backswing, can I get the wings to point at the same angle as my spine from the down the line perspective? So I can make a few waggles here, really trying to feel like I get the wings to match my spine, not to face be open, and equally as important, not to be too far to the ground. Each and every one of those two extremes is gonna be very, very hard to control that club face in the downswing. So mastering that takeaway is really important. My triggers for this is, and what I want you to feel in the drill, is that you feel like it's wide, it's wide, and it's mainly driven by this triangle between the shoulders, and then we collect the lower half. So we're gonna go waggle one, waggle two, keep checking it, waggle three, collect the lower half, and then at the top of the backswing, can I feel as though these wings are pointing to the sky, and my sole of my club is to the sky, okay? So watch this. And one, and two, nice and flat to the top so I'm looking for a flat lead wrist I'm looking for the sole of my club to match the sky and look at these positions as I've got so first position I'm looking for this second position I'm looking for this and you can really see this allows me to create a nice square club face throughout this backswing super important if we think of foundations of a house right if we don't have good foundations it's hard to put that glossy roof and that nice render on the outside, which we're about to do right now. Guys, welcome to Training Tuesday on Alex Elliott Golf. If you're brand new to Alex Elliott Golf, well, first of all, warm welcome to the channel. I bring you tips every single day that are gonna help you, most importantly, enjoy your game and hopefully, don't tell any of your golf mates, but hit it a little bit better than them. Now, if you're brand new to the channel, please do, before you leave, consider hitting that big red subscribe button. That's that one down there. And if you're doing that, don't miss any of the content. It's super important because each one of these tips could be the missing link in your golf game. So make sure you do hit that bell as well. This is the important part of today's video. Feeling this move in the downswing. This is the bit where a lot of people go wrong. We all seem to, which is fine, so don't beat yourself up if you're one of them players that keeps the club face good through the backswing and good at the top of the backswing, all nice and neutral. That's fantastic. We've got to think of that as a good tick on our checklist. This is the second point, and this is the missing link. Now, I wanted to use the reference point on if my club face is in a good position at last parallel. So, if none of you are aware of that, and again, that it's absolutely fine. Don't worry if you're not aware of what that is. Last parallel is the point on the downswing and the last point, the golf club, is parallel to the ground. And we can see that from the face on perspective and you can see that right and again from there. This would be called last parallel. So what we're looking for at this point is, again, bringing that club face back 
down into a stronger position. A lot of golfers at this point, and it's okay again if you're one of them, have this toe up to the sky. If you have this toe up to the sky, this face will tend to point open unless we manipulate it and get this toe to travel ahead of the heel. Now, with this move, we can play some very good golf, but it's hard to be that big word consistent. So this is the move I want you to create. Again, I really like doing this drill with the badminton racket and using each side of this as the wings of our plane. So one side of the wings, the other side of the wings. So, grip it all again, we'll go through the points of trying to feel the first point. Again, if you can't actually take your grip, don't worry, just keep the badminton racket in place. It's about getting a feeling and getting a bit of club face awareness right now. Position one, position two to the top. Now this is the key move. I think it's really important that we learn this as a sequence. So I want you to feel the lower half is our denominating factor in actually starting this downswing. But can I return this club to the point where the wings aren't straight up and down, they're on a slight angle and you can see the difference. If I bring this into the golf ball now, look how this club face points more towards target. If I bring it from a place where the wings are straight up and down and I don't manipulate the face, look how this face points to the right of target. So if we could create a few reps where we just swing up, swing down, okay, good. Let's feel we get it really over exaggerated. Wings on an angle, wings on an angle, finish it off on the way through. So as we're swinging this through, the wings of our plane I don't want to be manipulated too much. They want to feel as though they're on an angle and they're turned through with the body, rather than straight up and down and really manipulated through the hitting area. We translate that to what that would look like with the golf club in our hands, to the top, nice strong position, no real manipulation through the shot, but my club face is square. I'm turning the body, letting it fold onto the shoulder. Whereas if I had this in a very open position at last parallel, there'd have to be a lot of manipulation to try and square this up. And this is why some of you, and again, don't worry about this, we have days where we get it right and days when we don't. We're trying to hold on to a very, very open club face. We're trying to flip it, we're trying to save it, and it's hard to do so. But this drill has got you covered. Right, let's lose the wings of our plane, keep them in the forefront of our mind, and picture how we take this to the course. So, onto the golf course now. This is what I want you to do. We're gonna swing it to the top. First point, nice and wide. Wings of our plane matching our spine. Sole to the sky of the golf club. Get the wings on an angle again, through the shot, and you can really see how I extend and rotate, and then fold it onto the shoulder. There's very little feeling of manipulation through this shot from an open position, trying to close the club. And again, we're looking for that key word in our golf game, consistency. And I wanna say this, it doesn't matter whatever level you're at, it's your level of consistency. And this is gonna add a little bit of a better flavor to that. So feel it, one, two, wings down, rotate through. Okay, into the shot. Wings down, pull the trigger. Oh, that was smoked. Straight and as an absolute die. And a lot of you can relate to this. This is a hole here where you don't want to go left, but on the converse of that, you don't want to go right. I think it's important we actually summarize today's YouTube video because I want you to go away with thinking that this is my number one drill and feeling to take to the course because it helps me, one, hit the golf ball a little bit further because we're going from an open face and trying to save it, which we sometimes will get a long drive, sometimes get that very weak drive when that face is open. And saying, if we can have a stronger club face at last parallel, which is that really important point of the club shaft level and parallel to the ground. If we 
can get a stronger club face there, we have less manipulation. So stronger club face helps hit it a little bit further, but less manipulation helps us be a little bit more consistent. So again, just want to reiterate this, we're trying to create a position on the way back, where we've got the wings matching our spine angle, sole the club to the sky, not this way not this way, and I'm saying sole because we're looking for that checkpoint of our lead wrist being nice and flat and our sole to the sky. If it was cupped, the sole would still be to the sky, but in the respect of a cup wrist, okay? Look at the difference of what I'm doing here. Super important that lead wrist is flat and that takeaway will help us do that. On the way down, can I feel the wings of our plane on a slight angle, not toe up to the sky. Toe up to the sky will require some sort of manipulation through the shot to get the face pointing to impact, square. If I can get it stronger here, I can turn with speed, turn with power, rotate, pose the finish. Less manipulation means more consistent golf swings, and that is why that is my ultimate drill for you. So we've had some really great comments here. Um, the first one comes in from Edward Crossgrove, who said, hashtag pick me, Alex, absolutely love this content. Next one comes in from Andy Moore, saying great content, knowledge, and enthusiasm. Keep the high quality tips coming. Thanks so much, Andy. And the final one I wanna bring up here is from the Blonde Golfing Yogi. Said, hey Alex, great video. I'm wondering if you could do a video on technique of 150 yard bunker shots. My green side bunkers are awesome. Great to hear, many people struggle with these. But actually, I can't get them out of the bunker here. Thanks so much. So let's get this done right now. Let's show you quickly how we can master the fairway bunker. Now, what we've got to think about here is, we've got to feel as though we're picking this golf ball off the top. Now, a few things we have to take into account is the lip of the bunker. Make sure we've got enough loft to get over that. So 150 yards now, I've got eight iron. I could potentially get seven iron out of here. If you're tending to use a little bit less loft than that, so for example, five iron or four iron, potentially, if we're in a fair bunker, it's just taking our medicine slightly and advancing it up to the green as close as we can. But what I want you to feel is here, we're just picking that ball off the top. So, trying to feel as though I hit it with the bottom groove, almost trying to thin the ball, is my short tip for you. Let's hit this one away. Wiggle the feet in a little bit, make sure we've got a solid base, I'm trying to thin it off the top. Ah, oh, be good. Travel ball. Oh, just that little bit short. But the thing is, I got it up to the green as close as I can, taking my medicine, but taking full advantage of creating the next shot to be that little bit shorter. It's all we have time for on this week's Training Tuesday. I really hope you enjoyed that tip because one, it's simple. Two, it's something that we can all do. Getting better club face awareness. Remember, it makes up 85% of where this ball goes. We've got to have it under control. So thanks so much. Join me tomorrow for Wednesday Wisdom.